The door snapped shut and we were moving again. The second we were in motion, 20 sets of eyes were on me. Oh no. And that wasn't all. The strange group of people that had just gotten on the train, the pack of them, had this identical smile on their faces. I'm around the corner over by the dumpster. Come watch me sparkle. Sorry? Yeah, I don't know. Chloe followed the directions, crossing the dark and lonely street. When she rounded the corner, she was confronted by a horrific sight. I then hear a voice. Let me out. Oh. It whispered in a hoarse tone. It sounded like a young girl, and the voice was coming from the closed door of my bedroom. Welcome to episode. Fuck off. This is all well, staying in. To, to episode, episode 80 of Ghost, Ghost Towns. Towns. Great. How are you? Oh, I'm very well, actually. It's so good to be back, isn't it? Yeah. And we've had holidays. We've had a break. You're a bit tanned. Holobobs. You've caught the sun. Do you know I what's happened to me? I've I've got very dry skin, and mm. these bits here where the cheeks hit the sun. Is that from the... And I don't know what's going on. It's like it's flaking off my face. Do you know what? Right. What is that? I... Do you know what you need? Some clinic moisture surge. I Do swear I? by the fucking thing. Swear by it. Really? It's my favourite thing. My mum started using it. She's like, this is phenomenal. It just goes... That's what I need. And just literally injects your face. It feels like... It feels like you've had work done. Yeah, Because okay. it just shoves loads of hydration into your face. Yeah. No, I like I, do you know what I've used? Cicaplast B5 Balm. <laughs> Balm. Anyone who knows, knows. Um, but it's it's good. It's it's moisturising. But do you know what it is? My face is like, it's going to fix. However, yeah. as soon as you put makeup on it, it crumbles. And it's like, fuck, I can't really wear makeup until it's fixed. You want fixed. some moisture surge. That's what you want. Okay, trust, moisture trust. Surge, moisture surge. Um, did you have a lovely holiday? I did have a lovely holiday, thank you very much. I uh, I booked another one. Going away again. Booked another one. Fuck Pride. It. Pride, November, cranking area. Because I haven't had... I know we're in a cost of living crisis, right? But I haven't had a holiday yeah. in about five years. And most no. people have one a year. Yeah, I agree. It's time. So I'm just going to... And we might go Benidorm. We, I think we, well, I think we're going to do a little ghost hunt in Benidorm, which will be... <laughs> hilarious. Fucking hilarious. Well, I'm going to bring out Me, my Spanish. you, Sticky Vicky. Yeah. I don't think anyone is going to know, and no one will be able to speak Spanish back No, I was going to say, my Spanish will be lost on all of the, like... They'll be like, you what? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My um, my brother was just in Benidorm, and he was like, even the shopkeepers are like... Oh, what a flex. My brother was, uh, no, he was, was in, just in He Benidorm. was in Benny. <laughs> he took the Penny bus, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he was saying, like, the shopkeepers are... That sound is English. homophobic. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> what? He took the Benny bus. Oh, you know well, he I took mean? the Benny bus to Benny Town, yeah, if you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, so a little holiday maybe that we could share. I think we should. I can't believe we haven't been on holiday together. How was your holiday? We sort of have, but in like haunted places around the UK. Yeah. Um, my holiday was Gorgina, thank you. Yeah. I have to. I have to admit. The weather wasn't ideal. The weather was not ideal. And when that happens, you have to you have to dig deep. Yeah. In your reserves of patience, yeah. because first of all, I didn't want to tell anyone. Did you get? An, yeah, I know. I was like, um, no one's ever going to know. But Completely. now I, I just have to out the weather. Yeah. I'm yeah. out in Crete yeah. as being a little tricksy bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch out going to Crete. It's it's further south. The weather's temperamental. We yes. had a thunderstorm, and on our last day, on that Saturday, our last day, we we wanted to like lie out by the pool. You know, switch between the pool and the beach, the pool and the beach, beach mm. and the pool, cocktails and beers, beers yes. and then cocktails. Um, we couldn't do that and we had to go to the fortress and who wants to do What's that? What's the fortress? It's just a fortress. I wouldn't have gone. I would have just stayed in and looking outside reading my book. Yeah. Well, we'd done that the night before. The day oh, before. <laughs> so I was like, we have to have get to out of here. We have house. to do something like touristy and then we had to queue up with the other tourists and I was fuming. Oh, no. And then we were, like, reading the little plaques about the fortress and I was like, Ugh. We did go at a pretty, um, at a pretty dodgy time weather-wise. I mean, I don't mean to brag, but it was thunderstorming the week before we went to Naples. We had a week of literally pure sun and then it was thundering the day we left. Yeah. So it was just pure luck. Because if we'd gone the week before, we'd have been fucked. It yeah, been all that was the week. week I went, yeah. Oh, yeah, you yeah. did. You Storms went before everywhere. me. Italy, Greece. I went to Pompeii. Went to Pompeii. 
And that song is Harrowing. about is about Pompeii. Uh, yep. Eh-o, 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 I love that eh-o. song. I love it as well. It was great, but I did think. Oh, I mean, like, wouldn't you see one volcano house? What seen do you think all? of Michael Jackson's Earth song? Because I think it's a banger. Wow. Yeah. Mm. No, it is. Mm. I, I, I see listening. how you got there, though. We were talking about Pompeii, and then we were talking about the song, and then you were, you were thinking about <laughs> nature. Well, no, I was no, thinking about what... It's, it's a... that, it's that... Uh, 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 yeah, it's, it's that so bit. good. I'm, goosebumps. I'm shivers. Goosebumps. Chills. Goosebumps. <laughs> hey, do you know what? It is, a, it is an actual banger. It's a banger! It is, it is. I listened to it on repeat one. Really? When? For, literally for the last... Four days. Don't you, you do it now? Repeat one. Repeat one. I think that'd get a bit much because it's about seven minutes it long. Yeah, it's fucking great. It's it's got uh, chapters uh, to it. It's got a key change. Yeah, it's, it's got bad. the fucking gospels choir. The key change I like is oh. in um, Celine Dion's. Uh, oh, what's that song um, that she does? <laughs> Um, not the Titanic one. No, not the Titanic. It's like the um, oh, I'm alive. Stuart Little. Oh, no, I don't... I think I wasn't when thinking of that. When you call on me, when you call on me. <laughs> that one. <laughs> when I hear you, no, when I hear you breathe. <laughs> that one. That's, oh, I love that. What about the song Stunning. The Reason? The Reason, baby. <laughs> I don't know that. Uh, anyway, that? Uh, do you know what? I have to say, a key change yeah. is a nineties phenomena that yeah. needs to come back. I love because a key change. what the fuck? Why aren't there any? Why aren't there any key changes anymore? Oh, it's S- some of the best songs. Eternal. We're doing it. Why be the only one who oh, calls yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, and then it goes. I want to be the No, a key change is, is it really gets oh, the night going, doesn't it? It does get the night going. And now we're just in it. I mean, I am I am loving Dua Lipa and um, that espresso song. Uh, I don't know. I am a let me espresso, but it's very basic. You know yeah, what I mean? It's, like, what's it's, it doing? It's there for it's there. It's a pop fun. Anyway, um, yeah, more power ballads, please, from uh, Celine Cher. Sure. Sure, sure um, loves can change. we just do a shout out to our Oxford show and to the the gorgy people who came? Oh, that you was made our lovely. night just being a lovely crowd. We had Joe and her wife come along. Do you remember Lucy? Lucy and Sarah. Oh uh, no, Sarah and Sarah. Who was the who was the girl with well, the mum? Well, we we basically um, oh yeah, Sarah. Yeah, Sarah and, and we hexed a lady's nemesis. Hexed well, you it. did. Oh, shit, I wonder and how she's getting on. Right into us. Well, I, it, I can't remember. Was it I Amelia? Can. I can, we can't say it, but I can remember what No, it I is. can remember the nemesis name. I'm just wondering oh, sorry, the, yeah. the lady. Um, but the then, lady. Um, also, when we were doing the show, um, it was Lucy who told us about that place in Lewis. And then oh, they sent yeah. us a link, and it's called Lawton Place, spelt like laugh, and then oh, T O N on the that. end. Yeah. And um, they stayed in the tower, and it's from like 1594 or whatever. And apparently, like, they heard footsteps running about at night. Her husband oh, did as well. I'm like, yeah. And he was and to like, be honest, I don't believe husband, in any of that. Yeah, her husband. Luke's like the kind of bloke who'd be like, fucking bullshit. Yeah. He, I mean, I think initially he didn't really want to be there. Yeah. And then actually had a fab time. Yeah. But uh, something very on topic, we yeah. went to fucking Shrewsbury Prison. Oh, fuck. And I'm not kidding you, it, t- things happened. I, I said these I words. I was touched. Uh, you were touched. Emotion- um, emotionally. The I said these words. This is the most scared I've ever been. Yeah. Yeah, you did. That's an actual quote. Yeah, and I went... I've just shut myself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was scary as fuck. <laughs> really, really poetic. Yeah. Um, no, it, the things happened. I got touched. There was knocking. There was... We, we there guessed was, um, we were We were taken round by um, a fellow comedian, ghost enthusiast, Barry Dodds. Barry Dodds. Out. Barry Dodds won't hear this because he doesn't listen. Yeah, he's told us as much. He's like, oh, why would I? Um, he he took us round and he said there was a cell in here, mm. in this massive block, right? And there's like... Over a hundred cells, and he said there is one. See what you think. Go and around all of them. See if you get a bad feeling. And, and did we find it? Well, well, you'll have to look, watch Patreon. Yeah, because, because fuck me, it got weird. It was. It's one of the best ghost hunts we've ever been. It's. It is one of the best ones yeah. for sure. Yeah. It was fucking terrifying. It was terrifying mannequins. I scared the shit out of Susie. It was fab. Yeah, you did. She called me like a. She called me a cunt face or something. I can't <laughs> remember, but it was very funny. There was. Um, we Bell also piece. did. A, we did a BBC Oxford like. Um, radio interview uh, the day before we went to this prison oh, yeah. and they picked out the weirdest clip yeah. from the podcast I think I've ever heard. It was yeah. the bit where 
I said on the pod, we sometimes bank episodes. And yeah. you went, yeah. And I went, yeah, we sometimes bank them in the bank. Yeah. I was yeah, like, what? it was a really. And they were like, "Welcome, ghost hunts," and I was like, "Sorry." Yeah, they didn't pick anything good. I think a re- <laughs> so I think a, a young researcher was like, "I don't fucking care. Yeah, gives a shit. I just want to go and drink some cider on the fields with my friends." <sighs> so here's your three second clip of these yeah, fucking. No one gave a shit. I no don't think cared. anyone came from the interview. So, I last night had a dream um, that I was having an affair with my eighty year old English teacher. That oh. was weird, isn't it? As 80 or from back in the day? Mm, well, I said back in the day, he was like, well, I think he's probably older than that. Back in the day, he was about, I'd say, 65. Oh, so you were having an affair with a 65-year-old? I was ha- yeah, and I, I, it, it, it has made me incredibly uncomfortable. Was it sexy? Is that the problem, that it was good? <sighs> It wasn't completely sexy. Oh, uh, but it wasn't but not sexy. I, yeah. I had a crush on him, and I, mm. I don't in real life. And I woke up being like, why would I? So the other week I saw my teacher's vulva in the fucking gym oh, God. changing room, Damn. and now I'm having, uh, I'm having dreams about, you know, Mr Smith's old withered bollocks. Did you? Did they appear? <laughs> did they? Did they make it appear? Well, I, I remember being like, "Oh God, I fancy him," but I haven't broken up with Adam yet, so I can't. I can't do anything about him. And he was driving his car, and he leant over to kiss me, and I just pretended to ignore him. <sighs> and then he did it again, and he actually made me jump. So in my dream, I was like, "Ah!" <laughs> Maybe that was just Adam in your sleep. It's, leaning it probably over was for Adam. Smooch. Yeah. Well, see, this is the other thing that Adam does. When we went, when we were on holiday, we'd. I went. I went to bed before him and my our other friend Matt did. And Adam and Matt went out and got pissed till about three o'clock in the morning. So Adam comes in and when he's drunk, he thinks it's really cute to like kiss me on the forehead. But he'll kiss me on the forehead and then lean up and of the kiss will wake me up. So I'll open my eyes just like. And then Adam's massive fucking head's just there and it'll make scare the absolute yeah, shit yeah, out of yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. As in, like, he's like, a burglar. I say, it's 3 a.m., I don't want to... He's burglarising you. you. <laughs> burglarised me in my own hotel room. No one should burglarise anyone without their consent. If anyone's ever had any um, inappropriate <laughs> sexy dreams as well, can you please write in? Because I honestly feel... Uh, I feel really uncomfortable. I feel a bit is sad. Is that really your most uncomfortable sexy dream? No, 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 no. I've had far worse, yeah. but... I, but you know when members. it just makes it yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah listen we've all, yeah. we've all been there yeah <gasps> and those stay really? with you they'll never leave no no well thank you because I did forget about it and now you've just yes. brought it back well this is the thing is that it, you know when it just, you know when it's that day yeah I'll get over this one fine but for the day it makes me feel very uncomfortable very uncomfortable yes no yeah I remember my friend coming to me once being like oh I had a dream that my friend murdered me mum is that horrible and I was like let me tell you some of the shit <laughs> you're like you sit have, down have a beer and yeah. take a seat yeah exactly right would you like a story shall we do tarot yes <laughs> yes fucking hell we better get a move on thank you I didn't even think about that no it just came out oh chuck me the boot this is this is a little fella and a little lady and he's giving her a flower is it like the... Oh, what's it called? I don't know. It's, don't got, it's got the cups, so what? how many cups oh, can you see? one, two, three, four, five, six. Six cups, is it? Six cups. Six cups. And I don't know if we've had this before. Uh, I don't think we have, and actually... It looks quite pleasant. Yeah, OK, this is this represents a refreshing openness and innocence, a willing to learn, and optimism that things will get better as we advance together. Love that! That means Benidorm. Benidorm! That does. And Transylvania. Yes, we're going to fucking Transylvania, we're Transylvania. guys. We're going to that haunted forest. Um, I'm so hot. Oh, my... I'm boiling. Um... That is absolutely... That's gorgeous. There's no lingering emotional residue or entrenched nostalgia. You've digested your past experiences. They can be put to rest. How healthy. That is a very healthy, open, innocent... How healthy. You're welcome. Very gorgy No, I'm thrilled with that. Okay. Yes, please, Um, I'd like a story. Okie doke. Let's just do that. I just found my wife outside. I'm sitting here freaking out. Mm. It's 3.37 a.m. and I just found my wife outside. This is going to be a mess as I'm still shaking, but look, let me explain it as best I can. A bunch of years ago, we lived in another house. One night, I woke up in the middle of the night because I heard noises coming from the other half of the house. 
I quietly opened the bedroom door and immediately saw a light on in my wife's study, which was situated next to the kitchen. The house we lived in was a few blocks away from the bad neighbourhood, so my immediate thought was that someone had broken in and was going through the stuff in my wife's room as my wife had come to bed with me several hours prior, and as far as I knew, she was still in bed. I crept through the house and was ready to confront the person in the room when I realised that it was my wife. In my still half asleep state, I just assumed she was still in bed. Turns out she'd woken up, couldn't get back to sleep, and so went to her room to browse Facebook or whatever for a while. I'd almost confronted my own wife, thinking that she was a burglar. Burglar? Burglar. <laughs> she was a burglar! <laughs> thinking. She's a pirate burglar. <laughs> a burglarizer. Uh, thinking she was a burglar. Now, in our current house, we have a screen door and a wooden door. The wooden door has a deadbolt on it, and you have to make sure that you take the house keys with you, because if you close the wooden door, you're not getting back in, unless you grab the hidden spare key or knock on the door or window to be let back in. <laughs> current. Current? Yeah, it makes me laugh when people use the word current. Why? Raisins. <laughs> so... It's about an hour ago, I'm woken up by the front door rattling. I immediately grab my phone and pull up the security camera located right by the front door. To my surprise, I see my wife standing there, kind of shivering. It's just a lot of activity for this time of night, isn't it? Mm. Just like, can we just go to fucking bed, you yeah. bad bitch? Why did you go outside? It's definitely her because we've been married over a decade and I know what my own wife looks like. She's dressed in the same clothing she wore today, a red top and black. Pants. <laughs> just black, that made me laugh. black pants. Black pants. Just black pants. Yeah, trousers the on. Winnie the Pooh in. <laughs> it's 100% her. I don't know what she's doing outside, but she is. Confused. I roll over, and there's my wife, fast asleep. Oh. Remembering the incident in our last place, I use my phone screen to shine a light on her and confirm that it's definitely her, and she's definitely in bed. At this point, I'm really confused. I get up and make my way through the house to the front door. As I walk into the lounge room, our cat looks up at me half asleep. Normally, she's super curious about stuff going on outside, and I would have thought hearing the screen door rattling would have caused her to be at the door trying to see what's going on, but it's as if she hasn't heard a thing. I stand by the door and call out, Who is it? Yeah, now he must check whether or not she's a twin. Yeah. <laughs> Just. It's me. Hurry up and let me back in. I'm freezing. Mm, no, thanks. I went outside because I heard something but forgot to take the keys in my bag with me. Sure, Jan. That absolutely sounds like my wife. Accent, intonation, knowledge about where her set of keys are, everything. But I'm not convinced because I've just seen her sleeping in the bed with my own eyes. Hold on a second, I tell her. Now I'm heading back through the house and into my bedroom. I wake up my wife and say, this is really fucking weird, you have to see this. I open up the camera app and show her the front door. She's still at the door looking around, wondering what I'm doing because all I need to do is let her back in, turn the handle on the deadbolt and open the door. My wife says, what the fuck? When was that recorded? I tell her, it's not, this is live. You're standing outside by the front door. I just went down there, asked who it was, and your voice told me it was you and that I should let you back in because you're freezing and you left your keys in your bag. My wife gets up and peers through the bedroom window as you can just see the front door alcove from there. She gasps and pulls the curtain shut. She turns around and I'll never forget the look on her face as long as I live. She's terrified. Which one's which? Mm. That's the I reckon the one outside is actually the one in the knickers. The real one. The yeah. one in just a, the, Black one, pants. the Winnie the Pooh outside yeah. is his wife. <laughs> That's me, mm. she says. At this point, I'm freaking the fuck out. I'm wide awake. I'm speaking to my wife and I'm physically touching her while trying to peer out the window with her, but there she is, standing outside in the very outfit she wore today. Same hair, same glasses, same everything. It must be really weird, you know, like when you go in a changing room and you can see yourself from all different angles and it's mm, really... Yeah. I find that really You're like six freaking. Susies. <laughs> like, oh, God, I need some split ends cut off. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hate that when I'm like, my roots are down yeah. by oh, like, my neck. Oh, look at my back. We walk into the lounge room and I grab the big torch I have. It's a big, sturdy, metal, super bright light, great for blinding people and hitting them if they get too close. Sounds like he's got previous experience. Mm. We stand by the door again. What's your name? I ask. She tells me her full name, including her middle name. It's correct. What's your birthday? She tells me it's also correct. What do we have for dinner tonight? 
She tells me this too and tells me that I cooked it. This is right too. I can hear my real wife standing next to me trying to control her breathing as she's scared out of her wits. <clears throat> I nudge her and whisper, ask her something only you would know. After a moment to steady herself and think of something, she speaks. When we last stayed with my parents, what change had my dad made to my old room? There was a pause. Who's that? The person outside said. Why aren't you letting me in? You know it's me, you're starting to freak me out here. Who's that inside with you? Is that a recording of me? What's going on here? I said, answer the question. What change had been made to your room when we last visited? Another pause, then finally. Uh, there was a second bed added as Max and Damien, my brother-in-law's two kids, sleep in there whilst visiting mum and dad? There's an audible gasp from my wife next to me. Now we're both freaked out. I grab her hand and lead her back into the bedroom and turn the lights on. We're still awake, watching the cameras. The other person walked towards the backyard, presumably to grab the spare key, but that was about 40 minutes ago, and I haven't seen them since. I'm too shit scared to go to bed because I'm scared that this person, who knew everything about my wife, will find the spare key mm. and enter. I don't know who the fuck they really are or what they want, but I'm not sleeping. The end. Wow. Uh oh I think the one outside is the normal one and the other one inside He's is... He's locked the, in with the fucking yeah, mimic. Can you imagine? Yeah. Imagine, like, her head swivels through the Imagine having a handjob off a mimic. <laughs> well, um... Wow. We well, went there. Well. Let's pick it up from the gutter. <laughs> no, I loved it. Thank you. It's just very creepy to imagine, um, you know, a stranger in bed. Stranger danger. Or quite normal if you like that kind of thing. Okay. Would you like a story from me? Yes, please. This isn't um, necessarily necessarily paranormal, but no, I, no, doesn't I don't mind. It, our vibe is creepy. It creepy doesn't matter what. Creepy ghosts and things. Go on. <laughs> Should have called it that. Isabella and Chloe were two typical American teenage girls. After school, they spent all their time together watching scary movies. I thought it said sexy movies, and I was like, this is not the story You're that I thought You're on one today. I'm obviously just a horned up little dog, aren't yeah. I? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. Because, no, I'm not. Can't be asked. After school, watching scary movies, having sleepovers, shopping for new clothes. They like partying, keeping up with their friends, having fun, and just enjoying life. It sounds like a shit CV, doesn't it? <laughs> They had no way of knowing the horrible fate that life had in store for them. Oh. Is this Isabella and Chloe? Isabella and Chloe, yeah. Mm. One night, Isabella and Chloe decided to have a girls' night out. They planned to sneak out to a nightclub as soon as their parents went to sleep. Isabella kissed her parents and went upstairs to bed. Well, she kissed them goodnight, not like... <laughs> Again, you are on. <laughs> you just want to either snog or hand job or... <laughs> I do, something's going on. I feel a bit... Assaulted, actually. <laughs> Literally, the whole for that. <laughs> you keep <laughs> and making eye contact I'm me so when you <laughs> say it, and I'm like <laughs> snogging. No, yeah. I'm no. snogs her parents. I actually like... couldn't be bothered. <laughs> when she thought that everyone had gone to sleep, she took. Oh, sorry, phones are fucking loud. It was just that. When she thought that everyone had gone to sleep, she took out her cell phone, called her friend Chloe, and told her to meet her at the store down the street. Chloe agreed and hung up. Isabella quietly opened her bedroom window, trying not to wake anyone. She stepped out onto the windowsill and climbed down the drain pipe. As she walked down the deserted street, she got a strange feeling that she was being watched. The hairs on the back of her neck pricked up. She glanced behind her, but she was alone. When she came to the corner store, there was nobody around. She took out her cell phone and called Chloe. OK, I'm at the store, she I'm said. I'm at the store. Hurry up or I'm going home. <laughs> Hurry up, or I'm going home. I'm going home. Oh my god. Oh, what's wrong? asked Chloe. No, that was mum. <laughs> what's wrong? asked Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, replied Isabella. This just doesn't feel like other well, night. Something isn't right. I've got a really bad vibe. Stop it. You're just being paranoid, you stupid bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Does it say that? No. Laughed Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there in two minutes. Isabella hung up the phone, but she couldn't shake the feeling that somebody or something was watching her. Five minutes later, Chloe turned up and the two girls walked together to the nightclub. The girls were too young to get into the club, but the bouncers never asked them for ID. They strolled inside and pretty soon they were dancing to the music and flirting with guys on the dance floor. The good old days. Around 3am... 
Around 3 a.m., Isabella was chatting to a really cute guy who must have been at least 10 years older than her. Suddenly, she felt a phone vibrating in her pocket. It was a text message from her ex-boyfriend, Anthony. Ugh, we don't like Anthony. I don't know. Anthony sounds like a wrong one. We don't like him. She hadn't heard from him since they broke up a month ago. The text read, Come outside. I've got a huge surprise for you. <laughs> and let me just say... Wow. Come outside. I've got a huge surprise for you. I haven't taken it to the next level by you haven't, suggesting. But we all went there. Curious, she looked around and saw Chloe busy talking to some other man. So, without saying goodbye, Isabella walked out of the door to the nightclub. She'd just taken a few steps when she received another text message. Meet you around the corner, over by the dumpster. Who said this? This is this is a text message that she's got. From Anthony. She believes so. Oh right, yes. right, right. The street was dimly lit and deserted. Isabella had a bad feeling in the pit of her stomach. Something just didn't feel right, but she told herself she was being overcautious. You never are, though. You never are. Just go home. Just fucking go never, home. Never, ever do anything against your gut instinct. No. Like you should you should know that. Wow. Inside the nightclub, Chloe was looking for a friend, and after 15 minutes, she began to grow impatient. She, <laughs> she scanned the dance floor, but there was no sign of Isabella. She even checked the toilets, but they were empty. At 3.27 a.m., a relieved Chloe got a text from Isabella. It read, meet me outside now, hurry. When Chloe got outside, she received another text. I'm around the corner over by the dumpster. Come watch me sparkle. Sorry? Yeah, I don't know. Chloe followed the directions, crossing the dark and lonely street. When she rounded the corner, she was confronted by a horrific sight. Her heart almost froze in her chest. Isabella was hanging upside down from a street light in the parking lot behind the dumpster. Sparkling Christmas lights were wrapped around her ankles and there was a large pool of blood below her. <clears throat> Chloe fell to the ground and began screaming hysterically. Some people who were standing in the door of the nightclub heard her cries and came rushing over. When she turned the corner and saw Isabella's bloody corpse hanging in front of them, they were horrified. The police were called and they questioned Chloe for hours. Still in a state of hysteria, she could barely talk. Sobbing uncontrollably, she told them how she and Isabella had sneaked out that night and gone to the nightclub together. She tried to remember all of the guys that they'd talked, flirted with on, dan on the dance floor. They asked her if she knew of anyone who would want to harm her friend, but she couldn't think of anyone. As much as she wanted to catch Isabella's killer, she was of no help to the investigation. During their interrogation, one of the cops produced a plastic bag and took, took out a blood-stained envelope. We found this lodged in your friend's throat. Oh. I don't know whether I like that or like that. Jesus. That was not the most ridiculous description. Yeah, and a, if you're listening... For a podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that, I like that. <laughs> you can fit in the dots if you're listening. <laughs> Chloe was scrawled across the front. With trembling hands, she took it. I mean, I feel like if, even if it does say Chloe's name, the police should just read it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like, oh, God, this isn't for us. Yeah, no, no, keep it where it is. If anything, we don't want to get the postal system into trouble. With trembling hands, she took out the piece of paper inside and read it. The letter read, maybe if you stayed in bed like you were supposed to, things like this wouldn't happen. Don't go sneaking around at night. Bad things can happen. Is this like a cautionary tale from one of their mums? Maybe. Imagine that. They're just like, well, well I'll, I'll, I'll hang, I'll hang you. you from a fucking lamppost and yeah. stuff a letter down I'll your mouth. I'll kill your friend and then you're bloody loan, won't you? The cops had to grab her before she fainted. An ambulance took Chloe to the hospital where she was treated for shock. When Chloe returned home the next day, she was still shaken. Her parents told her that Isabella's boyfriend and her ex-boyfriend Anthony had been arrested for the murder. He was later released after passing a lie detector test. That just wouldn't happen, would it? He claimed his phone had been stolen on the day of the murder. The police didn't rule him out as a suspect, but they didn't have enough evidence to charge him. As fate would have it, Isabella's murder would remain unsolved. Nobody was ever brought to trial for the crime, and as time went on, people began to forget about it. Two years had passed and Chloe had almost managed to forget about the terrible night when her best friend had been savagely murdered. One night, she called her boyfriend and asked him to meet her at the park. It was about 2am. She's not learned, has she? What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> yeah. Well, she's forgot about it. It's like, oh, it was really sad. Why would and you now call it's... your boyfriend to be like, can you meet me at 2am? I think she just wants to go out. She just wants to. She little... just wants to go and get fingers. She began to walk to the park. Sorry, there we go again. She began to. I say that nearly every day. She began we to do, walk to actually. the park, but felt a strange presence, just like the one Isabella had told her about the night she was murdered. She was almost to the park when the feeling came across her, so she let it go. Her phone beeped. It was a text message from her boyfriend. Almost there, baby. Love you, lads. Ugh. 
It made her feel much better. It wouldn't me. I'd be like dumped. I'd be like dumped, yeah, divorced. Her last task was to pass by the store. The park was on the other side. She began to walk, but heard something behind her, and immediately she began to run. Her boyfriend got to the park and waited for about 15 minutes. At 2.35, he got a text from Chloe. It read, keep walking forward and you'll see me. He did as suggested and walked forward and there, hanging upside down from a tree, was Chloe. Christmas lights were wrapped around her ankles and she was completely covered in blood. Just like Isabella. Oh, Isabella, yeah. He called the police and was interrogated all night. The next day, when Chloe's boyfriend got home, there was a letter waiting for him on his parents' doorstep. Don't go sneaking around at night. Bad things can happen. I wish I could tell you that the murders of Isabella and Chloe were solved, but that's just not the case. Today, the police still the police say the investigation is still ongoing, but they have no new leads. The murders are seldom spoken about nowadays. They were high-profile cases at the time, but due to the lack of evidence, people soon forgot about them. Everyone who was involved went on with their lives. You might be wondering how I know so much about these cases. Well, I'd rather not go into it, considering it's still an ongoing investigation. If you must know, I was the cop who was assigned to the case. I was the one who handed Chloe the bloodstained letter. You may also be wondering why the murders were never solved, but like I say, don't go sneaking around at night. Bad things can happen. <laughs> it's a bad <laughs> copper! This is a cautionary tale. Bad copper! Bad <laughs> copper! <laughs> <laughs> Don't fuck. trust the fuck the police. Yeah, woo, fuck the police. Woo, woo, yeah. Woo, woo. How about that then? That's a bit spooky, wasn't it? It's spooky. Uh, well, again, this that is a moral tale about a moral the, tale. the police. I would have preferred it to be the mum. <laughs> yeah, me too. That would have been more fun. And it? equal, you know, there's motives for all. Motive, yeah? yeah, definitely. Don't go to the nightclub. Yeah. Don't go to the park. Yeah, and they sound is quite annoying. Stay in and watch Clarkson's Farm. Yeah, I started you know that. I couldn't, I, oh, it's so no, good. Do you know what? I have got the trashiest of TV taste, and I started watching Vanderpump Rules instead. And between you and me and everybody else who listens, I thought it was fab. I don't know what that is. It's reality TV. Have you watched The Gull Spang Miracle? Oh, you told me about this. You failed to tell me. It was subtitled. Oh, for fuck's sake, I told you it was Norwegian. What did you expect? For them to be like, oh, yes, hello, this is about our yeah. our yeah, time yeah. in the Norway. No, I don't like subtitled things. Can't concentrate. Oh, my God, your ADHD knows no, no bounds. can't do it. OK. I literally watched so you... it for three seconds until she came in and she was like, when I first came into the kitchen, and I was like, no, bye. <laughs> Hannah, you're missing out on some really good television. Just tell me. Just tell me what happened. No, because I'm that's a spoiler for Act everyone. Act it out for me now. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not a dance monkey dance. Yeah, well, yeah, you should be. <laughs> well, I could be, because I went to drama school. OK, would you like another story? Yes, please. This is why I'm never taking the train again. Oh. So a few days ago, I had to fly to San Francisco. San Fran. San Francisco. Um. <laughs> so a few days ago, I had to fly to San Francisco Chaos. for a conference. For a coffee. <laughs> yeah, some people are that bougie. They will fly I to San Francisco. Can Fran we go for a to coffee. LA, please? I'd lo- I really. Well, yes. I've, why are I'm you really, taking me? I really, I've got LA cravings. I've got California cravings. I'd love cravings. to go to LA. La La Land. Yeah, I've got the cravings. Los so Angeles. I've got, the, I've got well, California, the, the beaches. Oh yes. Mm. I've been and once, I'm watching but Vanderpump was, Rules. Do you know what I did when I was a teenager? We we, we did. Um, I think this might be one of the best things my parents have ever done for me and Hugo. Um, shout out, they might listen. Yeah. They did when we were in America um, a tour of five theme parks. Oh five, wow! Six what, flags. Six flags. Um, I'm Universal go to Studios, like yeah. Disneyland, LA. Like yeah. I'm not joking. It sticks out on my head. Like I, I was thrilled, and then thrilled again, and then thrilled again. That's and nice. again, and I was like, "What good parenting!" That's amazing. They, I they didn't give a fuck that. about roller coasters. Well, I mean, to be fair, we all had a really lovely time. Roller coasters are fun. And Universal Studios was amazing. The Jurassic Park ride. Queuing is not fun, though. <laughs> I remember my parents took you us to. You um, so funny. <laughs> It's like I'm on Zoom. <laughs> my parents took us to um, Florida. I can't remember how old it was, but I was like 11 or something. Took us to Florida for Disneyland. Like, massive, expensive trip. All three kids. Mm. Mental. They even took my friend as well. Oh. 
And we'd stayed in this lovely villa and it was all very exciting. So we're going to go to Disneyland. We got there and I was like, I just want to go back to the villa. This is shit. <laughs> oh my God, you're the nightmare I know. child. And my dad was like, I'm going to absolutely. I remember him being like, Ugh. what an ingrate. But at the time, I, I couldn't see anything. I was too sure. Everyone, it was so packed. I was just like, oh, I can see there's people. And it was, <laughs> it was, I was like, oh. Aww. But I'd love to go and do Disneyland again, actually. Well, we should do, what, do I'm, what I'm saying is I would like to recreate all that. Yeah, let's I want to go. go Universal go Studios. Charlie. I want to go on that yeah. Jurassic Park ride again. I mean, ideally, we come and do a little show. <sighs> oh, my God, I'd love that so much. OK, I'm manifesting it. Yeah, I've just manifested it. Isn't manifesting, right, because I was listening to a podcast yesterday and someone was talking about manifesting. Isn't manifesting basically where it's just like, I want this, and then you end up doing things to work towards it, so it's just doing it? Yeah, yeah. Essentially, it's like you have a goal, you take little baby steps towards it. Call so it what you magic. will. Call it what you will. I just working. Some... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Working, yeah. Working hard. Um, Excellent. Okay, are you ready? I am. <clears throat> I was born ready, mate. Oh, I've got a bit of lip coming off. Lovely. Lovely. Oh um, so a few it's days. Melting. Oh, yeah. Um, Flaking. I up. always think about um, Rachel Fairburn's bit, which is like pieces of people. Like she does this really funny bit about um, she doesn't like guests staying over because like bits of them fall off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah, can really yeah, see yeah, it, like yeah. bits of hair, yeah. nail. Lip. We're just bags of flesh wandering about, really, aren't we? Yeah, but it's so accurate. I'm like, that's what I'm doing in the studio right now. Okay, <clears throat> this is why I'm never taking the train again. So a few days ago, I had to fly to San Francisco for a conference. I'm from a fairly large city and I don't have a car. Unfortunately, that means I, like most people, am stuck with taking public transit. Mm. This wouldn't be a problem, except for the problem that since the city isn't as big as New York or Chicago, the trains are sometimes infrequent, especially in the early morning. My flight was fairly early, so I was worried about taking the train, but I didn't want to shell out money for an Uber, so I decided to go for it. I arrived at the station at 4.50 a.m. because maps told me that the train would be arriving at 5 a.m. I'd never seen the train station so empty. Besides me, I could count maybe a few other people. A college-aged girl, a mum and her child, and a businessman. 5 a.m. passed, then 5.01, 5.03, 5.08, 5.12. I started panicking. I was already cutting it close to my arrival at the airport, and if I didn't get on the train soon, I'd miss my flight. I breathed a sigh of relief when I saw the lights from the train at the end of the tunnel. Choo choo! Choo choo! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but. I love it. Um, that probably scared the shit out of someone. Yeah, it scared the shit Sorry. out of me. Sorry. Um, I checked my watch, which read 5.13. Well, better late than never. The train came to a stop. Weirdly, only the doors to one car opened. Huh. Maybe it was because it was so early in the morning, like they were trying to conserve energy or something. Since we had no other option, all of us at the platform entered the car and sat down. I was feeling a bit better about making my flight on time because I'd finally gotten on the train. There were about six stops before the airport so I could sit back and relax for a bit. About 40 minutes passed and we'd left the last stop before the airport. We entered another dark tunnel when the train lurched to a stop. Just my luck. Of course, we'd stop right before we got to the airport. Hey, folks, we're going to be adding a couple of extra stops before the airport today. Oh, fuck off. It shouldn't cause too much of a delay, so please be patient. If no. you want my advice, I would stay on the train, no matter what. Hang on, I thought they were on a plane. He's getting the train to the airport. Oh, so they're adding... Right, I thought you meant the plane's adding some extra stops. No, so I was that like, would fuck be very hell. strange. Um... If you want my advice, I would stay on the train, no matter what. As soon as the train operator stopped speaking, there was just silence in the car. Everyone on the train looked extremely confused. We were still in the dark tunnel when the doors suddenly opened. Not a single person had gotten on the train car at any other stop, but at this stop, almost 20 people, men, women, children, entered the train car in a single file line. Now the almost empty car was no, now the almost empty car of before was now uncomfortably full. The door snapped shut and we were moving again. The second we were in motion, 20 sets of eyes were on me. Oh no. And that wasn't all. The strange group of people that had just gotten on the train, the pack of them, had this identical smile on their faces. Mm. I felt extremely uneasy under their smiles, which directed only at me. Then, like a switch, everyone shifted their gaze and smiled at the businessman on the train. There was a pause for a couple of seconds and then they turned and smiled at the mum and her child. Then the college girl. It was like they were on a timer because then they turned back to me. All 20 people were looking at me 
with that plastered smile on their faces. I felt sick to my stomach. There was something extremely wrong with these people. The train stopped again at another station I'd never seen before. It was above ground with lush greenery and the sun shining brightly. Something called to me and I made a move to get up, partly wanting to get away from the smiling people and partly because it just looked like peace. Peas? Peace. Right. Peace. Not, Not peace. Not petit mm, love, love peas. I don't like peas. I love peas. I Garden them, peas? Yeah, I find them completely and utterly tasteless. Oh, I fucking love them. No. Oh, egg fried rice, put some peas in. Mm. I actually don't mind that, but it's because I can't taste the peas, so I feel like I'll get a bit of veg in. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Mm. But somewhere in my mind, I remembered the train operator's warning that I didn't understand <gasps> earlier. Do you remember our Caesar salad on Saturday? Yeah, that was fucking... Fucking hell. Yeah, Sorry. George Street Social, I think. Yeah, in Oxford. Oxford. Fuck, Go. that is one of the best Caesar Shout salads out. I've ever had. Sorry, continue. Somewhere in my mind, I remembered the train operator's warning that I didn't understand earlier. Stay on the train, no matter what. Then as quickly as I had the urge to get off the train, I sat back down. Mm. The train doors opened slowly, and the college girl from earlier quickly made her way onto the platform with a queasy look on her face. I made a move to stop her, but it was too late. She'd already gotten off the train. I could see her on the platform facing the opposite direction from me. She slowly turned around and my heart stopped because she stared at me with a smile that was all too familiar. Oh. Like they were lifted from a spell, the smiling people got off the train in a single file line and they all lined up on the platform in a neat line with the college girl smack dab in the middle. The train doors closed again and we were moving, but from the window I could see everyone on the platform with that same sick smile waving at us in unison. Mm. It was about a minute or two before the train stopped again, but this time it was at the airport. The rest of us on the train looked at each other uneasily, but slowly exited the train. The platform this time was packed with busy travelers looking to get home. The mum and her child left without a word, but the businessman and I made eye contact as we stood on the platform. We shared a look that conveyed that this strange train ride did indeed happen before we both parted ways. I'm still in San Francisco right now, but when I think back to the smiling people on the train, I'm still met with an unending sense of dread. But I'm extremely thankful that I listened to the train operator and stayed on the train. I do know one thing for sure, I need to buy a fucking car. Scary, scary. scary. In it. Yeah. What do you think happened there? I think um, he was a victim of his own delusion. Oh, do you think? You don't think yeah. that was um, creepy people trying to lure you into limbo? No. That's how I took it. Mm, maybe. As in, like, that, come, come this way. It's and green the, fields and, then, and sunshine. Yeah, what they were saying, like, to stay on the train is because if you don't, you're just going to end up in a state of nothingness forever. Yeah. That's... But completely aware of it. And what hell would that be? Um... Creep of the week. Creep of the week. Creep of the week. Creep of the week, creep of the week. I want to change our creep of the week song. Can we not do that? I'd maybe come up with a tune. Doesn't um, matter. Well, no, because now I know you hate it. I want to do it. I more. really hate it. Doing that then made me so uncomfortable. And I know that you were looking at me in the eye and I couldn't. Yeah, no, to be fair, it does make me feel awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't like I it. I think it's because I do a bit of like CBBC. I, I think it's just long, isn't it? But, you know, whatever. I, but I'm sticking with it. Please let us know what you think. <laughs> I like Creep of the Week. I mean, I, yeah, no, I do as well. I do as well. But it just makes you want Which to makes me want to um, fist my own eyeball. OK, Hannah, have you got Creepy of the Week? Yes, I have. Hey, Ghost Tons, I love your podcast so much. I listen to it all the time and it's amazing. Do you know what? I couldn't agree more. You are both so great at storytelling. I thought I'd enjoy, you'd enjoy this one. For a bit of backstory, this was in my old house. My little sister was around five. I was 11 at the time. And she had separation anxiety, so she was sleeping in my mum's bed at the time. My room was being redone, so I was sleeping in my sister's unused bed for a few weeks. It well, worked out quite well. This story takes place around a week into me staying in her room. I was about to fall asleep. I've always fallen asleep quite quickly. I've never had problems. Me neither. I will literally hit the goddamn pillow, and that's me done. I then hear a voice. Let me out. Oh. It whispered in a hoarse tone. It sounded like a young girl, and the voice was coming from the closed door of my bedroom. I could see my bedroom door from the bed, and I was frightened, to say the least. Originally, I thought that my brain was playing tricks on me when I started hearing light creaking footsteps on the floor of my back of the back bedroom which was my room at this point i was done i went to wake my mum up she came in and checked the room but there was nothing there 
The window was shut, so there was no chance of it being the wind. She then went back to bed and sent me to sleep. She then went back to sleep and sent me to bed. Until I eventually got to sleep, all I could hear was the faint whispers of, let me out, and help. Oh, God, that's giving me shivers. That reminds me of Castle Howard voices. Obviously, this is something that I would never forget, but it gets worse. Later, when I was about 13 years old, I found out that my house used to be an old ice cream shop in which the owner died. A sweet old woman who apparently had curly blonde hair. The shop went up in flames. She got barricaded in and died before the firefighters were able to get there. In this story, her cries of, let me out, and help me, are always mentioned. Oh my An Jesus! An ice cream shop God owner. in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> oh my Jesus! God in heaven. Mr. Jesus. Whippy. It's, <laughs> it's a God whole help new, me, Mr. Whippy. It's a whole new meaning to gumball. Do you know what I mean? What? Yeah. So that's interesting, isn't it? God. No, one at the screwball. What were those ice creams where you had a little? I literally had no idea. Little what chewing gum about. in the bottom. No idea. You never had one of them. No. They were my fave. You say that about a lot. What? <laughs> you go, oh, that was my fave. Well, have I ever said that about my about an ice cream before? Oh, actually, yeah, I said have. it the other day. <laughs> yeah, Calippo. Like, Calippo. Calippo could be my fave. Yeah, so we don't know with you. Anyway, but that was absolutely petrifying. Thank you so much for Who's sending that from in. Grace? That was from Grace. Oh, thanks, Grace. Shall okay. we do a quick We Get Haunted yeah, so you on. don't have to? This We Get Haunted so you don't have to. I, I, ideally, we need a bathroom, but we don't have one of those. Um, so what I need is the Queen, the Empress card oh, out right. of here, or a Queen. I mean, this is this is a bit lacklustre, to be honest, isn't it? This is a bit, it's a bit fucked. So I'm gonna find the Queen. Okay. Or Temperance. Temperance. Oh, literally picks oh, it up. Oh, stunning. Perfect. Okay, so we need the Empress card here. You're gonna summon up. Um, the Queen of Spades, because <laughs> oh, usually we need a Queen of Spades, but this is improv. Um... <laughs> the tarot what? cards are just on the floor. <laughs> uh, right, so what I need you to do is we also need a candle, but we don't have one of those. You can so... use my Leon coffee. Well, no, get your phone, please, Yes. and use the torch on your phone. Yeah. So take this, right, and can you at the same time... <laughs> no, do you know what? Here you are. This is going to be the mirror. You can use my phone as the mirror. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is place the card there. Here. Place it there, yeah. Place it on its little stand, Plus, yeah. So I'm put, looking at the put, Empress. Put I've got candle, my torch on. Put your candle in front of it. Yeah. And then... <laughs> this is very tech-heavy, isn't it? Yeah, fucking <laughs> hell. If you don't have... Um, if you're not watching the video, Susie's just doubled up on tech. Um, so put the thing in front of that's it, and then put your mirror there, and then you have to chat. Oh fuck! I forgot what it oh, was because you've fuck. got my phone. Give it back to me a minute. This is absolute carnage. <laughs> right. So you have to chant, Queen of Spades, come, <laughs> three okay. times. Yeah. Yeah. And um, she will appear behind you, in in the, in the mirror. Okay. I.e. the 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 Samsung. The Samsung. Okay. Um, yeah? Yeah. Go. Okay. Queen of Spades, come. Queen I'm sorry, of... you have to close your eyes as well. <laughs> Queen of Spades, come. Queen of Spades, come. Queen of Spades, come. Nothing happened, no. but that was really good. Thank you so much. Um, that... You are so... You've just nearly taken my finger off. If anyone doesn't know, Susie is like fucking Thor. She is <laughs> oh, so like heavy-handed. No, I'm just very dainty. It's been um, so stunning that's seeing been episode 80. Again. Um, so join us next week for episode 81. Don't forget that um, we are going to Edinburgh Fringe Festival. There are we tickets are. available. Last two weeks of Edinburgh, go to our link tree. And if you'd and... like to watch the Shrewsbury Prison, oh yeah, uh, it's out on Patreon now. So go over, have a little look. There's bonus episodes on there. There's ghost hunts. You have a fab time. We'll see you next week. See you next week, Bye. guys. Bye. Bye.